How you doing Kelly Crowd? The pike push-up is not only an amazing shoulder exercise, but it's also great for developing strength that can be applied to a wide range of skills and more advanced exercises. But all the tutorials on this exercise do not seem consistent. So not only are we gonna go through how to do this exercise today, we're gonna go through exactly why the form cues are so important. And then we'll go through some progressions from absolute beginner to our advanced variations. But first, if you would like to be part of the helpful and motivating community that we're looking to build here, then be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring the bell as well so that you never miss out on a Kelly to the Crowd video. The pike push-up isn't the easiest of movements to get right. So to start with, let's go through some common do's and don'ts with this exercise, starting with the first one, which is not piking enough. Pike mobility, so being able to fold forward, and in this case, get the hips really high, is what makes the pike push-up so taxing on the delts. Not piking enough, though, shifts the demands lower down the chain and more towards the chest. Now, while having good pike mobility helps, you certainly don't need to be able to touch your toes to be able to do pike push-ups. I would, however, advise that you try to work on your pike to a point where you can fold into a table-topped L-shape. This will not only make the pike push-up more effective, but it will also make it more comfortable as well. I'll drop a link in the description for how to improve your pike mobility, but if you struggle to get into a pike and you still wanna work on this exercise, you can always elevate your hands to help decrease how far you need to fold forward. The second thing you need to pay attention to is the movement path you follow when you're performing the pike push-up. The amount of tutorials I've seen teach people to do this exercise in a straight up and down motion is actually criminal. We want to move at a slight diagonal, creating a triangle at the bottom between our head and our two hands. This not only gives us more range of motion, but it integrates more of the delts and works better for transferring the gains from the pike push-up into skills such as the frog to handstand and the handstand push-up, where you don't simply move in a linear path. Sometimes you see people follow the correct path on the way down, but then change their mind halfway through and go into some sort of wacky push-up. Your body will want to follow the path of least resistance, so the best thing you can do is film yourself to check your form. The third common error is common with most form of push-ups, and this is the flared elbows. Elbows flaring out in the pike push-up is usually a signal that the delts aren't strong enough and so we try to compensate in a way that will recruit more of the triceps. But flaring out the elbows like this is murder for the shoulder joint and over time could lead to chronic shoulder pain. What we are instead looking for is for the elbows to hug the body and point backwards at the bottom and push really tall at the top of the pike push-up. To help us do this, we can keep the hands shoulder width, but visualize clawing the ground and screwing in two light bulbs with your hands. Your hands won't move, but it will help the shoulders keep in the safest position. The fourth mistake is usually made with the best intentions, and that is to angle the head back. Usually, because we're after more range, we can end up shifting the head backwards and forwards. This is not a great thing to keep doing over and over again, and it also encourages us to excessively arch the back. We want to keep the neck and the back as neutral as possible and if you're after more range you can always grab some parallettes to get yourself deeper. Okay so with those cues in mind we can start to discuss some pike push-up progressions starting with one for the beginners which is the pike lean. Essentially what we want to do here is get the hands on the floor and get into our deepest pike by walking forwards. Again elevate the hands if you need to. Keeping all the cues we just mentioned in mind so hands shoulder width apart screw in the hands, pushing tall through the shoulders, elbows pointing back. Start to lean forwards or come onto your tiptoes, shifting more of your weight onto your shoulders and simply hold it there. What I like about this is we can start to get used to holding weight overhead while inverted without having to juggle all the cues we just mentioned because we aren't moving much yet. Once we can hold one of these for 15 to 20 seconds, we can move on to the second progression, which is the pike shrug. Okay, so this progression only slightly ups the ante. What we want to do is get into our pike hold position, and then we're simply going to shrug so that our shoulders come away from our ears and we ever so slightly bend the elbows back, then push back into our pike hold. Being comfortably able to perform eight reps of this, and now we're layering on the foundations for the actual pike push-up, where we can start to apply all of these principles into one of the best shoulder exercises there is. Now, depending on how fast you progress, 
these may still be quite tough. So we can start to leverage pike push up negatives. What we wanna do is slow down the eccentric to about three seconds, drop to the floor, get up, and then do it again for reps. Keep doing this to build up your strength until you can perform the full pike push up. And for those who want to take this to the next level up, what we have is the advanced pike push up. By elevating the feet, we shift more of the weight towards the upper body. The cues here are mostly similar, except the challenge is to now start to stack the wrists, elbows and hips on top of one another at the top of this movement to really build strength that will translate into your handstand practice. The pike push-up is a fantastic exercise that will take your pushing game to a whole new level. But I wanna know what you guys think of them. Do you like them? Do you hate them? Can you do them? Let me know what you think in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next one.